All right, here we are recording another video. So today's something is a series I kind of got back into recently, Battlefield. Now, I've mostly been playing Battlefield 2042, but I do want to go through my history of the series and talk about what make why I like the series as opposed to Call of Duty or any other shooter. So I guess we'll start with the game I started with. Battlefield Bad Company 2. That's a game that a lot of people feel like a, a strong connection with. It... What games came out? Was Battlefield 3 before Bad Company 2? I just know, like, the tone of Bad Company 2, like, it had a story mode. I don't think... Battlefield 3 had a story mode. I don't think Battlefield 2 had a story mode. Uh, of course, Bad Company 1 had a story mode, but... People really resonated with, like, the tone of the story mode and the characters. And then the gameplay of the multiplayer had, like, this destruction of the buildings and all that. I played this on my 360 back in the day. And my mind was just blown with, like, how good this game looked. Like, what, was, what else was I playing around that time? I think I was swapping between Modern Warfare 2 and Bad Company 2. I don't know if they came out around the same time, like, if one came out a year or two later. But... Those two games I kind of went back and forth on, and Bad Company 2 just looked so, so good. And the destruction was like realistic, and you could shoot walls, and then you'd shoot people inside the buildings. It was crazy. But more than anything else, I don't think I was thinking, you know, like, too critically of games back then. I think it was just like this right point in time, where I had played Call of Duty, I was playing games like that where it's like super arcadey and you're running around shooting people, and it's fun and all. But then Bad Company 2 rolls around and I give that a try and it's like, it's not realistic. I feel like that was the thing back in the day where it's like, okay, you play Call of Duty if you want, you know, some arcade shooting and you play Bad Company or just Battlefield if you want like realism. Because, you know, it's not realistic by any stretch, but it's, it's striving for realism. You know, there's like bullet drop and there's building destruction. It, it felt like... You know, you play Call of Duty and then you graduate to Battlefield. Of course, that's, you know, a silly way to think of it in retrospect, but... When you're a teenager, you're looking for, like, oh, what's the grown-up thing I can do? And Battlefield felt like that step for me. But it was much more... I guess beyond that, it was also that point in life where I was, like, playing games with my friends on Xbox Live. And Battlefield games are great to play with friends. You know, you get in a squad and then you all get in a vehicle and you're running around like I'm driving. You get on the turret and shoot, and I'll be like, woo, wah! It was good fun. And then, I guess later on, I don't know how long after the game's release, but they announced a Vietnam DLC. So it was kind of like this, uh, expansion, where it didn't, like, add maps and guns to the existing game, but it was, like, its own standalone thing, kinda. That was really cool. I remember Black Ops 1 came out around the same time as well. You know, it was, like, similar guns, kind of a similar time period, I think. I don't know, I kind of liked, it was like older, a little bit older, but not not like World War I kind of stuff. Definitely talk more about, you know, World War II and World War II shooters later. But for me, Bad Company 2, it, it was just a certain point in life. You know, I, it's hard to, it's been so long, I can't really give you any critical thoughts on it. It was just, it just felt good at the time. It was that game that, you know, you just discover and you're like, wow, this is, I want to spend all my time playing this. And I did. Some years later, Battlefield 4 is announced and comes out. And I wasn't there for any of that. And thank God, because it, from what I remember, from what I've heard, Battlefield 4 at release was a nightmare. It was like there were so many bugs and like, might have been like balance design decisions that were messed up. It, it just seemed like an awful, I don't want to say awful game. It seemed like, it seemed like a mess. Having problems getting into servers and all that, I think I've heard about that. I'm pretty sure DICE, they put another team on the game, and that team turned it around. You know, there were DLC packs with weapons, vehicles, maps, all kinds of stuff. And like, how many map packs or DLCs were there? I think there was like five. And then each of those had a bunch of weapons. There was so much stuff in that game. And that only worked because it had such a great mechanical base. Like, just walking around and shooting felt great. You know, the recoil on the weapons, the animations. 
the way the weapons look, it just felt so good. And it, it looked good, too. Like, Battlefield, you know, through Battlefield Bad Company 2, Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, even up to, like, modern day, Battlefield just looks amazing. In Battlefield 4, it felt like that next step, where I'm pretty sure it was like a launch game for the 360, or it was like cross-gen between the 360 and Xbox One, and PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4. I guess it wasn't truly next-gen in that, in that it could take full advantage of the next consoles. It was still, like, tethered to the 360, I'm pretty sure. Was it... Was it fully a next-gen game? I don't know. I don't want to step out of line. I don't... It might have been on 360, it might not have been, I don't know. Either way, I didn't play it at launch. I played it later on in its life, after all the DLC had come out, and, you know, you get it on sale really cheap with the premium as well, for, like, 10 bucks or something. That was just... I remember thinking, that was such a great deal. You know, you paid... 10, 15, 20 bucks, however much it was. You get the base game, comes with, I don't know, 30 weapons, some nonsensical number like that. And then it has all these DLC packs, you know, add like five weapons each. And you have like five of those. Then you get all the maps, and there's like 50 b bazillion maps. You know, Battlefield 4, it feels like one of those games that people will be playing long into the future. You know, Bad Company 2, Battlefield 3. Those games might have a player base, but Battlefield 4, it feels like a classic, where it just got, you know, it might have taken them a while, a couple of updates to get there, but it feels like, it feels like one of those games that's just going to be around for a long time. So it was later on in its life I came into Battlefield 4, and then they started announcing new games, like Battlefield 1, Battlefield 5, and... I didn't care for those. I hinted at it earlier, but I just don't care about historical shooters. I don't know what it is. If I were to guess, it might be something like the guns. I like automatic weapons. I don't like single fire or bolt action weapons. I I guess more than more broader than that. I just don't like the aesthetic of, you know, historical shooters. You know, I like a G36. I don't like a a Sten. I don't even know that many older weapons. MP40. You know, I don't like those older guns. I like modern weapons with, you know, holographic sights and underbarrel grenade launchers, random stuff like that. That's what resonates with me. The World War I, World War II, that... I just didn't like that. So, Battlefield was just kind of like out of my life for a while. You know, Battlefield 1 rolls around, that gets a full update cycle. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm ready for the next one. And then Battlefield 5 is a World War II shooter, so it's more of that. Now, World War I and World War II are like different eras, kind of, but they're so close, it shares a lot of the similar aesthetics. So that, like, I don't know how long that was, like, five-year period? Four or five-year period of Battlefield games? I just did not care. Did not care at all. I did end up getting a... Battlefield 5 on the recent Steam sale. And I played a little bit of it, and it was fine. You know, I guess not to get too much into Battlefield 2042, but I'm playing a lot of that. And after playing Battlefield 5, the gunplay felt a little bit better. But I still don't like the aesthetic of the World War 1 and World War 2 stuff, so... I don't see myself ever going back and trying out Battlefield 1 or Battlefield 5 more. Yeah. So, with all that being said, I was really hyped when they announced Battlefield 2042. Now, while I did say I liked the... I'm not a huge fan of, like, um... World War I and World War II stuff. I'm not a huge, huge fan of, like, super far future stuff. So, like, Battlefield 2142, that was, like, far future, you know, like, space weapons that look nothing like modern weapons. I think so. I don't actually know. I didn't play that game. But, you know, laser rifles and plasma rifles and all that. I'm not too into those as a multiplayer shooter either. I like modern weapons. You know, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. I like the weapons like you'd see in real life. But Battlefield 2042, well, it wasn't quite far future. You know, there was Battlefield 2142 back in, I don't know, early 2000s or something. That was like far future with mechs and... 
rifle, laser rifles, stuff like that. But 2042, that's closer to our period. You know, that's 20 years away. There's a lot of weapons that look similar to, you know, what you'd see in a Call of Duty or whatever, a modern Call of Duty. You know, there's the M4A1-like, there's a... You got the revolver, you got the uh, Glock, you got, you know, shotguns. You, you know, you got stuff that looks like modern weapons, but they're just a little bit futurized with, you know, weird little design quirks. So that, I wasn't too bought into the far future idea, but the near future stuff, I was like, oh, okay, I could, I could work with that. And before release, it seemed like there was some really cool stuff going on. There was, I remember one of the first trailers they showed off was, uh, it was like a tornado hitting a town, or like a city. And like people were flying around and there was a guy in a wingsuit. That looked crazy cool. That was what I wanted to see in a Battlefield game. I don't want to see a tank rolling through like some abandoned village. I wanted to run around a, a city street of some dude with an M4A1, shooting bad guys, with a, and then using a grenade launcher, blast him away. And then another trailer came out. This was... This showcased the portal system. This was... I remember thinking this was the coolest thing. If I can remember the trailer right, it showcased, like, weapons and soldiers and maps from older games. So, what was there? It was, like, Battlefield 1942 for that era. There was Bad Company 2. There was Battlefield 3. Is there another one I'm forgetting? I just listed three. 1942. Bad Company 2. Battlefield 3. There's one other one I'm forgetting, and I'm, I feel like an idiot that I can't remember. Anyway. It had those eras, and it was like... Custom game modes. So... You wouldn't have the weapons from that in the main... You couldn't use, like, the M16 from Battlefield 3... You couldn't use that in the main 2042 game mode. You'd have to play like a server running the Battlefield 3 like engine framework. I don't know what you'd call it. But, you know, a server owner can say like, okay, let's let's play in 1942 mode. So people look like the soldiers from that game and they have the weapons and the tanks. You know, people liked, you know, there was so much potential in stuff like Halo's Forge, where there's like all these weird custom game modes with modifiers. And you can make these nonsensical, silly modes and just play in for fun. Sorry, I had to go do something and I lost train of thought. Regardless, Portal looked cool. That trailer looked awesome where it's like, oh, if I don't want to play this like far future stuff or near future stuff, I can, ju I can just play Battlefield 3 maps. I can just play Bad Company 2 maps. And use the weapons and be a soldier and play Rush on this map that I played so many times back in the day. I can play in this new engine with all these new mechanics. I thought that looked awesome. You know, you could join a server, play some weird mode, have a great time. And then the game comes out. Where do I start? Um, I guess I have to start with the specialists. The specialists are... The specialists are a pro to me. I know a lot of people, they really, really take issue with the specialists in Battlefield 2042. So, I guess to give context for people who aren't familiar, totally familiar with Battlefield, how it worked before. In older games, when you're spawning into a map, you select a class. So you could either be like an Assault, Support, Medic, Recon, Engineer. The number of them differed from game to game, but generally, you have these roles. And the Medic... That's going to be a person that does reviving. And the recon, they're going to be a sniper, and they're going to do a lot of spotting for enemies. Engineer, they're going to repair vehicles and shoot down enemy vehicles. You know, they have these distinct roles. And when you selected that role, you were just playing as generic soldier number 53. You weren't like John Battlefield and running around as a person. You were just like a... You were just a blank slate. You know, there was no characterization going on there. You were just a soldier in this huge fight. You join a 32 versus 32 player server, and you know there's just a dozen nameless soldiers running around shooting each other. There was a simplicity to that. And in the new game, in Battlefield 2042, they announced specialists. So you weren't playing as nameless soldiers anymore. You were playing as McKay, 
or Falk or Rao. These characters, whenever you were spawning into a map, you'd select a character. You know, you select McKay. And McKay, he has special abilities. He has a grappling hook. You know, you can point at the top of a building, shoot, and you'll fly right up to it. And then they have passive abilities, where McKay, his passive ability is that he moves faster while aiming down sights. So every character had abilities like that. You know, they can, they have one active ability where they got some gadget, and they have some passive ability that, it's passive ability, does whatever. People didn't like that. People really, people really liked, more than I thought they liked, people really liked the nameless soldier aspect of battlefields from the past. Which kind of surprised me. I, that never, like... Like, I liked Battlefield for a lot of reasons, but that never really stuck with me. I guess in retrospect, like, thinking about it, I can kind of see why. It, it just feels weird to me to, like, get hung up over, like, the whole game because of it. I like the gameplay variety specialists offer. You know, a grappling hook. I guess that would be cool if grappling hook was just, like, a gadget you could select. Like, as a nameless soldier. Like, if every soldier had access to, like, every gadget that specialists have. So, you know, like, Falk has a syringe gun. She can shoot teammates to heal. Uh, McKay has the grappling hook. Rao has, like, a... I think he's the one that has a... Like, a thing on his wrist, and he can target enemy vehicles and hack them. And that'll disable them for a short time. Casper has, like, a recon drone. I guess it kind of would be cool to have access to all of those... Like, if you just pick Engineer, then you have all the, like, building-related gadgets. Huh. But regardless of that, that never really... That wasn't a huge sticking point for me. I didn't feel either way. I kind of liked it, and I kind of saw ways in which it was different, and I didn't really like it, but... Whatever. Uh, for the pros, I liked the time period. I kind of mentioned that earlier. I guess this is part pro, part con which will kind of lead into the cons, but the monetization is all right in this game. It's okay. Specifically in how, like, the gameplay stuff you get is free. You know, when they add new weapons in, uh, new seasons, you know, they add a couple weapons each season, those are free. Now, they're locked behind the battle pass, but it's, like, free tiers of the battle pass. And once that season expires... It's not like those weapons are gone forever. They add some challenge to unlock it. It's like, a uh, get 50 kills with this old weapon and then you get the new weapon. Stuff like that. That's good. I like challenges like that. But during the season when the battle pass is still active, you know, you get to, it'll be like, the new weapon will be like tier 16 or something like that. And you just hit tier 16, you get it for free. And of course you can pay to get all the random skins and decals and stuff, but... If you don't want to pay anything, you can still get the weapons, specialists, vehicles. You can get all those for free. And then I guess to move on to the cons of 2042. Kind of going in line with the monetization. The Battle Pass is, is fine. I don't mind Battle Passes in games. I like having something to look forward to every week. You know, every Tuesday, the Battle Pass resets for 2042. So I log in, play my matches, do my weekly, do my weekly quests, and... I'm done with the game till next week. And I like that as pacing. You know, it's, it's, I'm pacing myself so I don't rush it all in one weekend and then get tired of the game. It's something I can return to every week to keep it fresh in my mind. And I like that as like a mechanic. I realize it's kind of like scummy and what's the word? Predatory. And that it wants to keep it in my mind. It's like, hey, don't forget about Battlefield. You know, you won't get to tier 100 if you don't play every week. But I like it. It feels fair. They give you enough weekly quests and double XP weekends and to double XP tokens in the battle pass to make it not feel like too big of a grind. You know, I'm just playing the game. And then the UI. The UI is kind of annoying. I guess specifically, the most annoying thing for me is the UI and the weapon selection. You know, maybe you'll have seen it in the footage by now, but when you're in the... When you're picking a character and you're selecting a weapon... It's like vertical lists, but it doesn't show a lot of weapons per, like, view. You have to scroll down a lot to see more weapons. So right now in the assault rifles, I think there's maybe like 12 assault rifles. 12, 13 assault rifles? No, that's a lot. Maybe like 9 assault rifles. 
but you can only see like three without having to scroll. That, that really, that's really annoying. In Battlefield 4, you could see like all the assault rifles and all the whatever. There weren't like huge graphics showing what the weapon looks like. It was just like, this is the M416, this is the AK, whatever. Showed them all. But in Battlefield 2042, it's a lot more compact and doesn't give as much information. That's just a weird little nitpick. I guess for a bigger, a bigger nitpick, if you can even call this a nitpick, it's more just a problem with the game. There's not a lot of content. Now, I know this game really struggled with, like, developer retention and, like, it was new developers and then some of them, some of those new developers just left the project. But for all that, regardless, there's just not enough content in this game. You know, the weapons, there's... Battlefield 4 had so many weapons. That's part of why that game is so good. That's why I, like... That's why when I'm playing Battlefield 2042, I'm like, man, I wish I was... I kind of want to play Battlefield 4 right now. Because you're just spoiled for choice with weapons. How many weapons are there? There must be, like... I think I was overestimating how many are in Battlefield 2042. Because there's, like, 14 assault rifles in Battlefield 4. There's, like, 14 of every weapon category. 14... 14 14 assault rifles, 14 carbines, 14 DMRs, 14 shotguns. Maybe not 14 exactly, but you are spoiled for choice. Almost to the point where it's like, what's this weapon do over this weapon? Where it kind of feels arbitrary in what, choosing whatever weapon. But it's also just like, if all these weapons are kind of similar in what they do, I just pick the one that looks cool. You know, I like the AUG. I really like how the AUG looks, so I pick that. Or I like the FAMAS, so I pick that. It's it's player expression in a way. You know, I get to I get to express myself in the weapon I pick and in the attachments I pick. And there's not a lot of that in 2042. There's not a lot of camos, there's not a lot of weapons. I can't help but feel that part of that is because portal mode exists. So portal mode, they had to make I guess I don't know exactly, but, you know, weapons from... They have these sections of the game where, you know, 1942, Battlefield Bad Company 2, Battlefield 3. You know, those games, they have weapons from those games. How much development time went into making those weapons? Like, I haven't played the Battlefield 1942 section of Portal yet. I haven't seen what those guns even look like. How much effort did they have to put into those guns... Like, how many portal weapons could equal one, like, 2042 weapon? Does that make sense? Like, could they did they just rip the assets from Battlefield 3 and put them into this game, make the weapons look a little bit nicer? Could they have made three portal weapons for one brand new weapon in 2042's timeline? I don't know. I don't know. They've slowly started putting weapons from the uh, portal into the main All Out Warfare, it's called, the 2042 game mode. But they're kind of restricted. Like, they don't have progression. They put the uh, M416, for example, in, from Battlefield 3 into 2042, into All Out Warfare. And it works, you know, it's just like any other gun. But it doesn't have progression. Like, all the attachments are unlocked right from the beginning. There's no camos. Like, what is that? There's no camo options for weapons from the Portal game modes. That is so weird. I guess it's a compromise in a way. Because it's no, like, would you rather have more portal weapons but no camos? Because to be honest, I've been surprised at how many portal weapons they're adding into All Out Warfare. They add, like, two or three every update they decide to add them. And there's a, there's a new update coming this month, probably. So they'll probably add more? Two more? I don't know, it's... You know, if they could have sacrificed every portal weapon, every weapon from 1942, every weapon from Battlefield 3, Bad Company 2... You know, Portal Mode, it's... To me, those don't even exist in this game. I'd just rather play the main mode, where I get progression for all my stuff, and it's the thing most people play. A lot of people don't mess around in Portal. Like, I haven't looked, but I would be surprised if there's a lot of servers running, like, Bad Company 2 maps, with Bad Company 2 weapons, and all that. I'd be surprised if those exist. Like, the most, the most people that play this game play the main mode. This game already kind of has, like, a player base problem. Because, you know, the negative reception at launch. So it kind of splits the player base, and... 
I kind of just wish they would have put all the effort from the portal weapons and portal gear and all that into All Out Warfare and, you know, maybe you'd get 10 more weapons out of that. I don't know. It's hard to say. It's, it's just me kind of guessing about, you know, how much effort went into this versus this. It's, it's whatever. Uh, overall, I'm happy with 2042. I'm sad it's not getting as much content. Like, they announced that they're still going to work on the game post uh, Season 4, which is what they promised for the Ultimate Edition that you pre-order. They promised four seasons of content. And they're still going to work on it past that, but there's not going to be any new specialists. Probably still going to be new weapons, maybe? I don't actually know. I guess for the future of the series... <laughs> I just hope we don't go back to World War I or World War II. I would very much love... You know, Battlefield 6. Just make it Battlefield 4, 2. That's all I want from a Battlefield 6. I think Vince Zampella is working for DICE now. He's the guy that worked at uh, Infinity Ward back in the day. Made the uh, good Call of Duty, like Modern Warfare 2, stuff like that. And then he went to Respawn and did uh, Titanfall 2. You know, those, those juggernauts of a game. You know, if he's if he's behind the wheel of Battlefield now... I'm hyped. I'm hyped for Battlefield 6. I guess I can allow myself to be hyped. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I'm hyped for the new Battlefield game, I'll say it. And I'm a little hyped for new content for 2042. I'm still playing it, you know, a lot of people don't like it, it's still got a pretty bad rating on Steam. You know, they're turning around 2042, and I'm kind of excited for the future of the series. Alright, well I guess that's it for this video. As always, leave a comment suggesting a topic for a future video, and uh, see you next time, I guess.